Friday, January 15th, 2021, morning meditation, first week after the Epiphany. Meditations are taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choices Teacher in Moral Theology. <coughs> Act of Faith in the Presence of God, Nomina Patre, Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being preferred to others. Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being consulted. Deliver me, Jesus, from the desire of being approved. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being humiliated. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being despised. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of suffering rebukes. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being calumniated. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being forgotten. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being ridiculed. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being wronged. Deliver me, Jesus, from the fear of being suspected. Deliver me, Jesus, that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provide that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this, our morning meditation, through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, Ever Virgin, Ave Maria Grazia Pana Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu in Mulieribus, Similictus Fructus Ventris Tui Jesus, Sancta Maria Mata Dei, Or Penobis Peccatoribus, Nuc Nehor Mortis Nostre, Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray Gloria Patria Filio, Spiritus Sancto, Secudera in Principio, Nuc et Semper, in Secula Seculorum, Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. For what is your life? Worldlings esteem happy only those who enjoy the pleasures, the riches, and the pomps of this earth. But death puts an end to all these earthly goods. Quote, for what is your life? It is a vapor which appeareth for a little while. Unquote. Oh, my Jesus, how often for the miserable pleasures of goods of this earth have I offended and lost thee, who are an infinite good. For what is your life? It is a vapor which appeareth for a little while. James 4, 15. The vapors exhaled from the earth when raised in the air and clothed in the light of the sun make a splendid appearance. How long does this splendor last? It vanishes before the first blast of wind. Behold that nobleman, today flattered and feared and almost adored, tomorrow dead, despised, and reviled and trampled upon. 
a death we must leave all things. The brother of that great servant of God, Thomas A. Kempis, took delight in speaking of a beautiful house which he had built for himself. A friend told him that it had one great defect. What is it? he asked. It is, answered the other, that you have made a door in it. What? rejoined the brother of A. Kempis. Is a door a defect? Yes, answered the friend. For through the door you must one day be carried dead, and must leave house and all. Death, in a word, strips man of all this world's goods. Oh, what a spectacle to behold a prince banished from his palace, never more to return to it, and to see others take possession of his furniture, his money, and all his goods. The servants leave him in the grave with a garment scarcely sufficient to cover his body. There is no longer anyone to esteem, to flatter him, no longer one to attend to his commands. Saladin, who had acquired many kingdoms in Asia, gave directions at death that when his body should be carried to a place of burial, a person should go before, holding a wind, winding, winding sheet suspended from a pole and crying aloud, This is all that Saladin brings with him to the grave. Unquote. My lord, since thou givest me light to know that whatever the world esteems is smoke and folly, Grant me strength to detach my heart from earthly goods before death separates me from them. Miserable that I have been, how often for the miserable pleasures of goods of this earth have I offended and lost thee, who are an infinite good. O Jesus, my heavenly physician, cast thine eyes, eyes upon my poor soul. Look at the many wounds which I have inflicted on it by my sins, and have pity on me. Quote, if thou wishest, thou canst make me clean. Matthew 8, verse 2. I know that thou art able and willing to heal me, but in order to heal me, thou wishest me to repent of the injuries which I have committed against thee. I am sorry for them from the bottom of my heart. Heal me then, now that it is in thy power to heal me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Psalm 40, verse 5. When the body of the prince is laid in the grave, his flesh drops off, and behold, his skeleton, skeleton can no longer be distinguished from others. Quote, Contemplate, says St. Basil, the sepulchres of the dead, and see if you can distinguish who has been a servant and who has been a master. Unquote. Diogenes was one day seen by Alexander the Great seeking with great anxiety for something amongst the bones of the dead. Alexander asked him what he was in search of. Quote, I am looking, replied Diognese, for the head of Philip, your father. I'm not able to distinguish it. If you can find it, show it to me. Unquote. Men, says, Saint, says Seneca, are born unequal, but after death are equal. And Horace says that death brings down the sepulcher, scepter to the level of the spade. Sceptra legobunus equat. In a word, when death comes, the end comes. All end. We leave all things... And of all we possess in this world, we bring nothing to the grave. I have forgotten thee, O Lord, but thou hast not forgotten me. And now thou makest me feel that thou wilt even forget the injuries I have done thee, if I detest them. Quote, but if the wicked do penance, I will not remember all his iniquities. Ezekiel 18, verse 21. Behold, I detest my sins. I hate them above all things. Forget then, O oh my Redeemer, all the displeasure I have given thee. For the future I will for forfeit all things, even life, rather than forfeit thy grace. And what can all the goods of this earth profit me without thy grace? Ah, assist me. Thou knowest my weakness. Hell will not cease to tempt me. It has already prepared a thousand attacks to make me again its slave. No, my Jesus, do not abandon me. I wish to be henceforth the slave of thy love. Thou art my only Lord. Thou hast created and redeemed me. Thou hast loved me more than all others. Thou alone hast merited my love. Thee alone do I wish to love. Spiritual reading. The things that we must know and believe. Some necessary by necessity of means and others by necessity of precept. There are some articles to be believed by necessity of means, without which we cannot obtain salvation. Others by necessity of precept. The necessity of means implies that if we do not believe certain articles of faith, we cannot be saved. The necessity of precept signifies that we must believe certain other articles proposed to us by the church, but if it happens that we are ignorant of them by invincible ignorance, 
we are excused from sin and may be saved. 1. To know and believe that there is a God and that he is a just rewarder of virtue and a punisher of vice is certainly necessary as a means of salvation. According to the words of the Apostle, quote, For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder to them that seek him. Hebrews 11.6 Some authors hold that belief in the other two articles, the Trinity of Persons and the Incarnation of the Word, is necessary by necessity of precept, but not necessary as a means of salvation, so that a person inculpably ignorant of them may be saved. At any rate, it is certain, as Innocent the Eleventh declared, when condemning a contrary proposition, that he who is ignorant of the two mysteries of the Most Holy Trinity of the Incarnation of Jesus Christ cannot receive absolution. <clears throat> Quote, We are obliged only by necessity of precept, which, however, binds under grievous sin, to know and believe the other articles of the Creed, at least the principal articles among them, such as that God has created heaven and earth, that he preserves and governs the universe, that the Blessed Virgin Mary is the true mother of God and is ever a virgin, that on the third day after his death, Jesus rose from the dead by his own power, <clears throat> that he ascended into heaven and there sits at the right hand of his eternal father. By this it is meant that Jesus Christ, even as a man, sits at the right hand of God, that is, that he permanently possesses a glory equal to that of the father, as Bellamine explains, I said, even as a man. For as God, Jesus Christ is in all things equal to the Father. As a man, he is indeed inferior to the Father, but because our Savior is at the same time both God and man, and only one person, therefore the humanity of Jesus Christ in heaven has a glory and majesty equal to that of the Father, not by its own dignity, but because it is united with the person of the Son of God. When a king sits on his throne, the regal purple that he wears is with him. Thus, the humanity of Christ by itself is not equal to God, but because it is united with a divine person, it is seated on the same throne with God, with a glory equal to that of God. We are also bound to know and believe that on the last day of the world, all men shall rise and shall be judged by Jesus Christ. We must also believe that the Roman Catholic Church is the only true church. Hence, they who are out of the church or separated from it can not be saved, except infants who die after baptism. We are obliged to believe in the communion of saints. That is, that each of the faithful in the state of grace partakes of the merits of all the saints, living and dead. We must also believe in the remission of sins. That is, that our sins are remitted in the sacrament of penance, provided we are sincerely penitent for them. Lastly, we must believe in eternal life, that is, that he was saved by dying in the state of grace will go to heaven, where he will enjoy God for all eternity, and that he who dies in sin will be sent to hell, where he will be tormented for all eternity. <clears throat> Moreover, every Christian is obliged to know the precepts of the Decalogue and those of the church, and the principal obligations of his own state of life, whether he be an ecclesiastical an ecclesiastic or secular, married or single, a lawyer or a doctor, etc. Everyone is bound also to know and believe in the seven sacraments and their effects, particularly the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, penance, and Eucharist, and the other sacraments when he is about to receive them. All are obliged to know the Our Father. The Our Father, or Lord's Prayer, is a prayer that Jesus Christ himself composed and left to us, that we may know in what manner to ask the graces most necessary for our salvation. St. Hugh, Bishop of Grenoble, on one occasion when he was ill, repeated the Our Father 300 times in one night. His attendant advised him not to repeat it so often for fear of increasing his illness. The saint answered that the offender had said it the faster he recovered. That the oftener he had said it the faster he recovered. It's particularly useful to repeat over and over again the words that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For the greatest grace that God can bestow upon us is to make us do his holy will here on earth. <clears throat> it is also very profitable to repeat the petition and lead us not into temptation, begging the Lord to deliver us from temptations in which he foresees that we should fall. Moreover, everyone should learn the Hail Mary in order to know how to recommend ourselves to the Mother of God, 
through whom, as St. Bernard says, we receive all graces God gives us. All should likewise know that there exists a purgatory, a place for expiating sins after death, where the faithful suffer for their sins, those temporal punishments that they did not fully undergo in this life. We should therefore be mindful to pray and offer our suffrages for the holy souls in purgatory, whom we are, as far as we can, as we can bound to relieve in their sufferings. Indeed, the least pain in purgatory is greater than all the pains of this life put together. For the pains of these spouses of Christ are most intense, and these poor souls are unable to assist themselves. If on earth our neighbor was suffering great pain and we could relieve him without any great inconvenience, should we not be obliged to do so? We are equally bound to render assistance to these holy souls, at least by our prayers. We should also know that it is very useful to us to obtain the intercession of the saints, and particularly of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is of faith, and the Council of Trent has declared against the impious Calvin, who said it was wrong to ask the assistance of the saints. Nay, according to the doctrine of St. Thomas, we mortals are absolutely bound to go to the saints in order to obtain, through their intercession, the divine graces necessary for our salvation. Not because God cannot save us without the intercession of the saints, but because the order established by God requires that while we remain in this life, we shall be brought back to him by the mediation and prayers of the saints. This doctrine is also held by other theologians. We should likewise venerate the relics of the saints, the cross, and sacred images. Concluding prayer, I give you thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou dost not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee. And I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee, and why should I delay that thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I've been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory, and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. Nomen apache fili, spiritus sancti. Amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.